Hello chess friends and welcome to Azad of Chess Channel and welcome to a really epic and spectacular gameplay by the two strongest chess engines in the world. Welcome to an amazing gameplay by Stallfish 16 against Lila C0 in a crazy King's Indian defense. And you probably have seen many great King's Indian defenses, many winning games by black, many winning games by white. Uh, this game is really, really something different. I've seen many, so many great games played by Hikaru Nakamura, Gary Kasparov, all also all of the old masters used to play the king's indian with the black pieces and also many epic games are won by white but this game is really something else with really crazy immortal tactics all over the board so put your seatbelts on and enjoy in really one of the most spectacular king's indian offenses that i've seen in my life so with the white pieces the fish open with move d4 we have knight to f6 by lila c4 g6 knight to c3 bishop to g7 e4 d6 leads now into the standard position of the king's indian defense we have now the normal variation black is later trying of course to break a uh, white pawn chain with the move e5 or if necessary with the move c5 the fish continues with knight to f3 uh, we have now kingside castle bishop to e2 e5 the standard move of the king's union and now after kingside castling we have now the Aronian time out of defense with the move knight to c6 stallfish advances the pawn we have now the move knight to e7 and as i explained many times a uh, white's pawn chain is showing that white of course is attacking this side of the board black is of course trying to make progress with the potential f5 move knight to e1 we have now this idea to lock here the position to fix the position with the move f3 and then also with knight to d3 to support the further progress with the move c5 but lila clears now the f file is preparing now to move f5 stockfish continues with bishop to e3 f5 f3 and now also the standard continuation for black getting an extra tempo against the bishop bishop drops back to f2 and is controlling now uh the h force diagonal here and also this diagonal on the queen side we have now the move g5 lila continues as usually as black is supposed to play is continuing now the pressure on the king side the fish continues now with the move b4 is preparing on move c5 knight to f6 by lila clearing now also the lie square diagonal for the for the bishop of course and this lie square bishop in the king's union as we mentioned many many times is uh, simply the best minor piece on the board it supports of course further this progress with the move g4 is of course also in some lines if white plays carelessly in some lines you see also many times this bishop getting sacrificed maybe for the h repon so black has now this dominant position on the king side but if the attack splashes if black doesn't do anything um, uh, with this attack on the king side then white because of the space advantage here should be uh, much much better so white uh, has to defend his position and if white defends it somehow then uh, i think from an end game's perspective white has always a pleasant position but now the real fun starts the fish continues now with an aggressive c5 uh, in chess history knight to g6 has been uh, many times the continuation there is now also the legendary game between Jerome and Piquet against Gary Kasparov uh, back from 1989 please check it out also a legendary game play by uh, Gary Kasparov but here Lila continued also with the normal stuff uh, with move h5 which is also perfectly fine putting more pressure and is preparing of course the move g4 but so far you see uh, white is holding the position on the score g4 here in the continuation stock which co continues now with the interesting plan a rook to c1 and this move is very important because actually it does damage here around the square c7 usually black could be challenged on the seventh rank for instance if the rook somehow gets on the seventh rank then there are also some tactical possibilities here for white what should you do in chess history b6 has been played also again knight to g6 and also the move g4 has been played many times lila continues now with an interesting sideline uh theoretical novelty but the game will again um, will come to positions that we have seen in chess history but not in this particular move order uh rook to f7 by lila is i think also perfectly fine here lila is trying of course to play bishop to h6 rook to g7 and then to support the further g4 move is trying to get the rook somehow on the g file and creating some dangerous stuff against white king the fish continues now with of course the queen side uh, attack here with knight to b5 and this is now the beauty of the opposite side attack game uh, you see both engines are attacking one side the, the engines uh, the other engine is atta attacking the other side so who is faster who will get an extra tempo will probably win the game and what should you do here from black's perspective if you try maybe here to 
kick away this knight. White has this intermediate attack against the knight. You could maybe grab this uh, knight, but we can also grab the knight on e7. Then after queen to e7, actually white uh, wins an extra pawn. You may be trying this line, knight to e8, and then uh, maybe to fix the position around the square d6. But now in this line, uh, white should be better. I would simply have here this two versus one situation on the queen side. And again, from an endgame's perspective, uh, this should be perfectly fine. Although black has some chances here, uh, but um, I think think with this uh, plus one up uh, situation with a pawn uh, here for white i think black could have many many end game problems so that's why for knight to b5 uh, lila continues again with knight to g6 also a uh, very standard idea is still trying to do something there saltfish continues now with c takes d6 and after c takes d6 knight takes a7 again it seems so that something is wrong here for black because black lost the pawn but actually the knight is now a little bit misplaced and this maneuver this idea uh, this defensive also approach by black has been seen actually many times in chess history it seems as i said that black should be losing here because uh white gained the pawn but white uh, get challenged now in a beautiful way with the move bishop to d7 and actually it's very hard for a white to get the knight back into the game if you play here bishop to b5 then rook takes a7 will happen then we have this one rook takes uh, bishop takes d7 rook takes d7 and even if you grab now uh, the rook here um on on a7 then it gets very complicated with the move b6 you see now uh this bishop is locked out now you're trying maybe to defend it but now with queen to a8 i would say really an unclear position uh black will eventually get the uh, get the bishop uh, here and will have three minor pieces against um one minor piece and a rook here from white's perspective so as i said i'm not sure which position i would love to play now anymore uh white has of course again this two versus one uh here on the queen side but um, when it comes to maybe this uh, king side attack again um white could have many many tactical problems even if you play knight to b5 here if you're trying to try to get the knight back into the game then actually black can uh take out the knight and after bishop to b5 now the bishop is not controlling anymore the g4 square so that's why g4 uh i think could cause a headache here for a white and you see the bishop is not on e2 anymore uh h4 will happen g3 and similar stuff suddenly i think black would have a nice attack on this side of the board so you see after move uh, knight takes a7 uh the issue for white is here that white cannot get the knight easily back into the game so that's why white has to search for different opportunities lila continues with bishop to d7 now we have a4 uh stockfish is trying now to get again the knight on b5 but lila continues obviously with an attack with the move g4 you see the knight is a little bit misplaced although it took a pawn we have now the move a5 by stockfish g3 bishop to b6 very important intermediate attack against the queen queen drops back to e8 and now queen to d3 queen to e7 again a couple of repetitions and now we have g takes h2 uh what should you do you cannot take i think here the pawn uh because you get knight to g4 and then the queen is coming on h4 it gets very 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 again complicated although uh the engine gives here equal chances for both sides from human's perspective i would not love to play now anymore this game uh with the with the white pieces the queen is coming there could be a g3 move then afterwards uh you could face also several checkmate threats so very very nasty stuff so that's why king to h1 is here the correct choice now when the queen drop back to e8 now when the queen is not threatening anymore to check on h4 finally stockfish takes out now the pawn on h2 we have now h4 by lila rook to g1 a knight to g a knight to h5 preparing of course the hop on the score g3 you see lila is doing really some damage here very really active and beautiful sharp tactical play by lila c0 but stockfish is of course also uh, a great not only a great attacker stockfish is of course also a great defender stockfish finds now the only i would say good move uh, here for white knight to d3 with the idea to reroute the knight on f2 and from the square f2 uh the knight could control the h3 square but also the g4 square this is very important because it's not allowing further progress here by 
by black then with h3 or maybe with some tactics that we have seen previously around the score g for very very important defensive maneuver here by stockfish we have knight to g3 Leela gets now this knight on a very unpleasant square stockfish plays now knight to f2 controlling both of the squares knight to f8 again with the same idea maybe bishop to f6 or bishop to h6 rook to g7 or maybe rook to h7 trying to include now the rook into the attack but now stockfish shows here also great counterplay as i mentioned the position could crack for black on the seventh rank stockfish plays now important rook to c7 is actually also in some lines trying to give up the rook for a bishop here on d7 because as i mentioned also in the beginning of the video the light square bishop of blacks is usually the best really the most powerful minor piece in the king's indian defense and now there as i said the bishop is always targeting the h3 square so that's why if necessary white can sometimes release the pressure can some somehow defend his position in a good way by giving up the rook for a bishop although it's an exchange sacrifice but then you don't have to worry so much here on this diagonal here we have bishop to f6 by lila stockfish first of all takes out now uh the pawn on b7 h3 now you see uh lila is trying to break the position here but now after g takes h3 now knight to h7 trying of course to get the knight on g5 and then hit the h3 square stockfish finally plays now uh, this tactic that we have talked about rook takes d7 giving up simply the rook for a bishop stockfish doesn't want to tolerate such an active piece by lila we have queen takes d7 now finally knight to g4 locking everything here solid structure solid position solid defensive uh, set up here for white finally sort of house that stockfish built and has now also the opportunity to hide with the king on g2 and everything is perfectly fine when it comes to again to an end, end game's perspective this exchange sacrifice was very good because stockfish also took here two pawns on the queen side so with the support of both of these bishops if these pawns are starting to march uh, then, then again many many end game problems here for black we have king to h8 the lila is trying of course also to include now this other rook into the game stockfish continues with bishop to b5 queen to e7 knight to c6 queen to f8 and now bishop to f1 stockfish would love of course uh here this continuation when maybe lila takes then we pick up this one and there's simply no good attack uh, anymore for black and maybe knight to g5 but then we go king to g2 rook to h1 again uh, building a solid structure on this side of the board after bishop to f1 we have bishop to h4 lila is trying now to include also the bishop into the game we have bishop to d3 rook to g7 and now rook to c1 again stockfish is searching for an attack on the c file we have a rook to e8 queen to b2 targeting now also this rook indirectly of course but there are some dangerous dangerous ideas here on this diagonal something if something clears then the king could be in danger and that's exactly what stockfish noticed here after move knight to f6 as we mentioned stockfish is already down the exchange has of course a compensation with these two uh pawns on the queen side but now stockfish plays another ultimate stunner of this game plays now the move knight to e5 gives up even the knight here for uh, a couple of pawns here because after knight to e5 we have knight takes e5 and um you could maybe here try instead of this move um uh, pardon me from knight to e5 we have king to h7 um here stockfish plays now knight to g4 with the idea to play the move e5 and liberate now the long diagonal for uh the light school bishop you see stockfish created here two connected mobile pawns in the center of the board and also here stockfish created two connected mobile pawns on the queen side so stockfish has gained now four pawns for a whole rook when it comes to pure uh, um, uh, material count i think uh, this in some lines should not be enough but these pawns are rolling these pawns are marching and also black's king now is pretty endangered what should you do if you retreat here uh, uh, with your king on g8 uh, then there is this one knight to h6 you get a check if you of course are trying to get out of this light for mess then you have to step back with your king to h8 but now bishop to c5 is also very dangerous look at this the queen is actually trapped you have to now cover with, with the rook and now it's a different story stockfish will get now uh, the rook for a bishop and has now of course here the dominant position with these two pawns with these two pawns so now i think it's a completely completely winning position so let's see different options after move knight to g4 that stockfish plays you could also try maybe knight takes g4 but then after h takes g4 uh finally 
Stockfish will build really a firm structure in the center of the board. And notice, again, Stockfish is down a whole rook, but has, of course, a compensation in pawns. You could maybe try king to g8 in this position, again, avoiding this uh, dangerous stuff uh, on the light square diagonal. But now e5 anyway. And now after something like bishop to d8, you push the pawn further. You're trying maybe to uh, get this rook uh, in order to stop somehow white's progress with the pawn. But then king to g2, you can even improve the position of the king. Queen to g7, and now with rook to c7 i'm not sure how black is going to stop now uh all of these pawns uh, here on the queen side and also in the center of the board bishop to c4 is also a nasty threat so uh here is obviously i think a completely completely winning endgame here for white all of white uh, has lost a rook with this beautiful tactics uh, all over the board but after knight to g4 that's why knight takes e4 uh here by lila lila is trying also to give up uh here some material to somehow stop as i said this progress of this pawns in the center of the board stockfish plays now knight to f6 the correct choice because after bishop to f6 we have this one bishop to e4 what should you do if you play here rook takes e4 then queen to c2 will eventually also um, uh, grab the rook now on e4 and you can maybe try, try some dangerous stuff i don't know with bishop to e5 maybe f3 then uh trying to deliver some dangerous checks but actually white can defend this position very easily with queen to c8 you're trying your check you're trying even your checkmate here on h2 but now with queen to f5 you simplify the game enough uh after a couple of trades of queens of course this is completely completely winning end game here because of this especially because of these two uh, uh connected pass pawns on the queen side so that's why for bishop to e4 uh lila retreated to g8 and when we watch now this position uh stockfish is down the exchange but has of course many many pawns as a compensation so obviously a much much better position here again for white we have bishop to d4 simplifying the game here by stockfish queen to d6 uh, stockfish pushes the pawn further we have now rook to g1 again a nice simplification by stockfish first of all uh, grabbing the rook after f takes g3 stockfish plays now a beautiful calm king to g2 doesn't want to take out the pawn immediately because then you're vulnerable again to some checks now when lila first of all delivered the check now stockfish took uh, the pawn on g3 and you see now there's simply no good check uh, by the queen that's possible and now the pawns are marching lila takes out now the pawn stockfish pushes this one delivers a check and now a new check pushes simply the pawn further we have queen takes d7 and now after bishop to e4 uh here obviously it's game over even if you try here i don't know rook takes e4 then we simply pick up this one maybe you can deliver a couple of checks and maybe after queen to g4 you can again trade off the queens of course white and black don't have to play the game like this but i wanted to show you what's the what's the actual threat simplifying till the end and with two, two pawns obviously game over but after bishop to e4 lila tried um, uh, king to f7 stockfish delivers a check and in this particular position lila c0 resigns so what's the issue if you play king to f6 you lose the queen if you here, play here king to uh, e6 then or bishop to uh, f5 is winning the game again game over here for black so Oh, oh, stunning, stunning, dirty stuff um, in the King's Indian defense. A very epic attack by Stockfish. First of all, giving up the rook for a bishop, then sacrificing the knight just in order to create this central pawn mobility. Uh, also, this beautiful endangered king position. Lila found some nice defensive ideas, but this powerful attack was simply too strong for Lila C0. So okay i hope that you enjoyed this game i really enjoyed it a lot really really interesting stuff in the kings in the defense by the strongest chess engine in the world by stockfish 16 if you want to see more beautiful sharp aggressive chess like this uh, check out our com to chess games play by computer series with some more play games by alpha zero lila zero stockfish and many many more and if you like this content hit the subscribe button see you soon with some more videos and what do we say in the end chess is the best of course